So there goes the nice mat coat. The best stage I think of the entire build is where we get to see everything come together with the mat coat. And then if we zoom you in, hopefully you're seeing our pit top tubes here are looking really nice, looking very kind of nice and realistic. Um, and I love the way you kind of just put, give a bit of a, a black sort of tinge to it just to make it have that um, blending effect and have that slight bit of burning effect. Matte coat goes on and they look absolutely lovely. I've also managed to um, unmask as well and our pilot in there is looking really nice. But what we want to do now is we want to come back to um, our lights. If you remember we um, put some of that um, that um, liquid mask on there and what we want to do now is remove them. Now because we put all these coats of paint and gloss and matte and everything on here you know it does kind of get a little bit um, welded on a bit um, you know so it needs a little bit of help so I'm just off camera grabbing a number 11 blade now I'm doing this because um, we want our blade to be really nice and sharp. But I'll quickly show you a little tip. Um, when removing these blades, you know, try not to kind of come along with your fingers and trying to pull them off and everything. You know, a nice bit of uh, metal pliers here. We can just pull it up a bit and then we can just push this off with the pliers we're not touching it we're not going to get all cut and everything like that because these are sharp blades getting out a new blade using exactly the same technique we um get the pliers to hold it and push it on you'll hear a click and it's in place yeah so nice little tip there to save you from um getting blood all over your model and then coming back to our um, little light here what we want to do we know we've got our liquid mask on there so with our blade we can just give it a little bit of a cut all right just around the edges as careful and as lightly as you can you know this nice new sharp blade should do all the work all right and hopefully we can now peel this up a lot easier and better so I'm just going to try and get our blade to try and get in and underneath and start pulling this up, which it is. And as we pulled up that little bit, we can get in our tweezers. And hopefully that should just come off all the way around pretty nicely. Just have a quick look. Yeah, there we go, that's come up all nicely, as you can see there. Um, we've also got um, these little lights that were just here as well. We can, uh, we did not put any liquid masks on these, because they're such a nice little flat surface, what we can do is literally shave this off with the blade. Right, so I'm just shaving off all the paint, then we can lightly sort of scrape it. Exposing the clear plastic. And then we can come in with um, one of our polishing sticks using, um, not the where it makes it really shiny, the white side, but this side is like just, I mean it's like polishing it up, but it's just got a slight bit of roughness to it. Right, and this really kind of does a very, very, very fine, fine sanding, because we've just scraped that up, we just want to polish it up, make it nice. Now I'm touching this very, very lightly, because this is just a slight bit of a raised part going on here. Right, and we don't want to end up sort of polishing off the matte coat anywhere else around here. Right, and then we can go to our real polishing side which shines it up just to finish this off but I'm doing it very lightly I'm hardly touching it because I don't want to press down and sand anything else around it so you might have to polish at this a little bit more than usual but that's looking um, quite nice now but then what we want to do is um, give it that red 
light. Right, so I'm just shaking up off camera um, Tamiya's um, Clear Red X27, and we can simply, with a nice paintbrush, nice and clean, right, we just dip it in the pot. And then we very, very just lightly, we just want to touch nothing more than the top of that surface, like so. And there we go, we got ourselves a nice red light there. And we didn't have to go off faffing around with any kind of fancy um, masking up or anything like that. Because of that little tiny little dot there, I mean, to mask that up would just be kind of stupid. Whereas that was just a nice, easy trim, sand down, and paint a bit of red on top. Um, so I'm just going to go off and kind of remove all our other lights just underneath here. Um, and we're coming very close to completion now. Right, coming back to our resin exhaust here, all nice and finished. The last bit now is to put this on the model. Now, um, when it comes to natural metal finished paints, as I've already said, spraying on gloss coats and matte coats and all this kind of stuff will um, take away from the nice natural metal finish we've got here. It will dull it down and make it less kind of natural metal finish. So by waiting till the end, i.e. you know, we've put all our last spray coats on, we've just matted it up, um, we're not going to be putting any more spraying on this, we can now literally just put this straight in just like so and actually I've already test fitted this and it does actually fit rather well there is no real need for any kind of glue or anything like that and it does fit nice and snug nice and secure and hopefully as you can see that is looking rather stunning at the back there and if you can just see in there you got all that nice ceramic stuff and dirt and grime going on in there tip it upside down you can see it just underneath there as well bit of our Tamiya um, weathering master set going on just at the back there just to kind of jazz that up looking very very nice indeed just the last step now in this rapid video build and that is just to finish off our GBUs now um, our little um, sensors here on the end of um, sprayed them up separately um, I'll just quickly show you because I mean as you can see this is looking all nice and finished now weapons are on our GBUs are on here um, and we just got to put these little nice little sensors on the end and I did decide to kind of spray it a bit of a different color to the rest of the GBU I decided to go with XF67 um, I've looked at lots of reference photos and I mean you can spray these things or whatever you want I mean uh, there's all sorts of different shades of green and I've saw grey ones and all sorts of different things going on and these sensors I've seen like natural metal finish ones and everything so um, you know pretty much whatever you want I just wanted to kind of jazz it up a bit um, to be a bit more than just one straight colour what I just want to do is I just want to um, dip our sensor into our um, nice sort of bronze here by Citadel and all I'm going to do is just on the lid I'm just going to dip it in very carefully and then pull it out so it looks all nice and even don't be worried if you want to dip it in again if you want to cover a little bit more make sure you've got it all the way around which hopefully you can see there we've got this nice bit of a bronze thing going on on the end there we just want to leave that to dry and I'll just show you what we need to do next to finish this off so we've our bronze now all nice and dry getting out a polishing stick we're going to use the green side first and what we're simply going to do oops, we've had it coming off what we're simply going to do is just very sort of lightly give it a nice sand hole. maybe we put it down on the ground it's a bit tricky to mess with but we're just giving it a nice light sanding All right remember this side is it's not really sanding away it just gives it a light sand and hopefully you can see we've just sanded a bit of that um, bronze off we turn it over onto our polishing side so we make it 
all nice and shiny and come up like glass. As I say, it's a little bit tricky to hold and sand, but you'll get there in the end. Right, and that's looking pretty good now. So I'll just show you this. Just get it on our little pin here. Just got it on the pin, and hopefully what you can see, it is very small to see to be honest with you, but what we've got, we've got our green on there, we've put our um, we put our bronze on there, just dipped in the bronze, and then we've just lightly sanded it with a polishing stick, right, because we've got no gloss sealing this in, you know, polishing that off with our very fine green um, sanding stick, and then shining it up with the white side, um, just gives us right on the end, it's just like we've just sanded it away, we've got the clear plastic there, so it looks like glass and all our sensor and stuff so now we want to mount this onto our model now I've left this last last for um, a very good reason and is, and that is these sensors they don't um, you know they they they're loose right so gravity pulls them down so what we want to do is the actual kit here gets us to actually put this on and it kind of sort of goes on straight really um, what we want to do we want to cut off these little ends here very carefully just like so so we've just cut off this little circular piece so what's going to happen now is this is going to fit on here a lot better so I'm just going to grab some tweezers right and just off camera I've got my um, little palette with some super glue on here some nice um, medium CA glue and I'm just gonna lightly put it on the end just there and then what we want to do we want to put it on nice and straight as possible but have it go on at a little bit of an angle where it goes down so we want to make sure it's nice and straight that way but then it comes down at a bit of an angle just a nice little bit of an angle just like that so maybe kind of tilt it hopefully you can just see how it's just you know gravity's knocking it down a bit um, and that is because these are loose um, so gravity um, pulls them down obviously and it just hangs a bit when it's in flight and you know you've got uh, you know and the, the aircraft's going forward it pulls it up nice and straight um, so we want that nicely hanging just got to do the other three and that is it you know we have finished here we are all now nicely finished everything has been done and I must say I am quite impressed with it I mean I've, I did feel it was a little bit um, halfway through the build but actually it's turned out rather nice I do like our um, aftermarket exhaust here uh, remember no gloss coats no matte coats and you'll end up with um, keeping that nice natural metal finish so I mean be careful when handling it but um, it definitely was worth the time and if you do get an F16 I do recommend getting a nice resin exhaust because you know it is quite a big exhaust you know it is something that's gonna you know show up and getting these resin exhausts look really nice and all that nice ceramic tile going on there and weathering you know it's a bit hard to see in there but trust me it does look really really nice so definitely recommended to get that um, move along to the front now um, we did kind of spend a nice bit of time in this video looking at our air intake now hopefully you can agree that the air intake is quite a big air intake and if we got all our um, seam lines all wrong and we've got big gaps going on in there you're gonna see them this is one of these aircrafts where our exhaust our, our air intake so big I mean we can actually see quite clearly down there you know it is something you're gonna notice so taking that time to sort that out and get it all nice and seamless really does 
pay off in the end. Um, as well as that, we've got a nice array of weapons going on in there. I really do like to beef uh, my aircrafts up and having these free fuel tanks really do um, kind of beef it up. I really do like all those um, um, ta um, fuel tanks there and nice nice array of weapons. We could have done with some more weapons, but I mean, you know, it's still um, rather nice. And the pit up tubes, um, hopefully, as you can see, you know they do look nice there as well especially our um, uh, angle of attack probes they're very very um, like really really kind of sharp basically I mean they they can be as I say hurt and you know pierce the skin and everything but because they're so fine it makes them look really really nice um, so let's have a quick um, final conclusion let's get out the instructions and I just want to quickly you know skip through them um, and let's have a, a just a quick look um, cockpit out of the box you know very very decent cockpit and a decent pilot as well um, um, you can get resin cockpits and stuff for this but out of the box um, you're not going to really grumble at that <coughs> excuse me the whole construction I mean I did have quite a moan about how um, it's not two halves coming together and we can just um, sand down our seam uh, our um, leading edges but just underneath our join lines were just along the sides in the end they've turned out rather well but a little bit of a, a sand and a, a little bit of a rescribe just to kind of um, make them look nice it does make it look a lot better um, so you know maybe i kind of had a bit too much of a moan there but they did turn out all right in the end um, moving along um, the whole um, landing gears there was quite a few um, little tiny ejector pin marks they were quite faint so we kind of got away with them i'm not really noticing them, them but you know they were still there they could have um, gone about that a little bit better um, moving along the air intake as i say you know the air intake something you want to tackle but remember we had that big gap going on um, just here where the air intake fitted um, it was a big gap everything else around it fitted rather perfectly but there was that big gap we tackled it and actually it's um, looking actually rather good I can't really notice it we've got um, the fuel tank here as well which does kind of cover it up so you're not you know it does kind of cover that up as well as um, our lightning probe here so um, you know even if you didn't get it quite perfect as I say it gets covered up a bit and as you can see you can't really see see um, anything really going on there so um, that was nice to do and tackle um, moving along um, yeah the um, tail just here if I just get the model um, what we had we had these like little rubbers and these metal pins and the whole idea was it of it is that the tail here can be lifted off and put back on at will now I think this is a bit of a gimmick and I wouldn't bother doing that I would just go along and just glue it on the reason for that is you glue it on with um, you know your, your, your Tamiox fin cements and your, your cement S's and what it does it melts the two pieces of plastic and gives you a very nice um, sort of better join whereas if you left it unglued you have this very faint gap right I mean it's a good fit I must admit but it was a very faint faint gap um, that you would kind of notice um, can be a little bit loose um, the whole point of it I think is just that you know you can take that off and you can transport the model a bit better to like shows or something like that which um, you know I mean in the past I've done lots of commission work shipping out lots of models in the mail and everything and trust me um, I would not be bothered about this tail at all when transporting it um, you know so removing it and putting it back on you know it is a bit of a gimmick underneath um, the uh, I do believe the fuel tanks could be removed now it was kind of cool that you could remove it and put different sort of um, maybe weapons on um, but I didn't see much point in that either and not being able to remove all the weapons uh, you know I just thought stuff it I'm just going to glue it all down I don't see much of a point in that but it is a bit of an option if you want it um, but I think it's a bit of a gimmick really um, so that was that um, co uh, pilot pretty decent um, pilot going on in there 
canopy. Now the canopy, um, I did go on about saying how there's a little bit of a crack um, sort of just on the canopy there. Um, you probably can't see it on camera because I know it's there. I mean, I do notice it slightly. It is actually, yeah, that, that's a good angle on the camera. You could just see that little bit of a crack. It depends on where you rotate it in the light. Um, even with the Mark One eyeball, you can see it. Sometimes you can't see it. Um, but um, someone else did PM me. No, actually, they um, they put it on the forum actually saying that they bought the same kit and exactly the same crack, crack in exactly the same place, both on the clear and the um, smoke canopy. So. It does look like it's quite a um, common fault with the kit, which is a bit of a shame, but I think we can just about get away with it. It isn't like as bad as some I've seen, um, but that is something that you can't sand out or anything like that. It is down to the core, which is a bit of a shame. Um, moving along, um, it was just the weapons. The weapons were rather nice. No real problems there. Um, so there you go, we've just gone through it and had a quick rundown of the problems. Um, all in all, not really major problems. Um, one or two little, kind of, you know, with the whole, um, there was the gap under the, um, on, on the belly side um, by the air intake, the crack with the canopy. Um, but really, apart from that, it did actually fit rather perfect. Um, it has that nice Tamiya, everything fits really nice and perfect and all that kind of stuff. So is it worth getting this kit? Well, I would say yes, it's definitely still worth getting this kit, um, even with those few little issues. I think um, the Hazegary one is quite good, but I think I remember when I built it, I had loads of problems around the air intake area. Um, and then there's the Kinetics kit. Now the Kinetic kit, people are saying, um, people. some people do like that one over the Tamiya. Um, and I think it's really just down to price, because I think the Kinetics kit does look like, from what I've seen of it, that it fits together the same way as our Tamiya here, um, but it's 20, 20 pounds cheaper. It's about 30 pounds rather than 50 pounds. Um, but you don't get the nice, perfect Tamiya fitting um, with the Kinetics. The Kinetic kit's a little bit rough around the edges. Um, you're probably going to be doing more filling, more sanding, but the general fit of it all is basically the same. So it's all about, you know, do you want to spend a bit more and have a better fitting kit, or do you want to spend a bit less and kind of, you know, maybe tackle a bit of filling and sanding a little bit more. So. There we go, definitely a recommended kit. I hope you've enjoyed this rapid video build and hopefully, you know, we've just kind of cracked on and got down with like the fit issues and the interesting bits a bit more. Um, so really until the next step by step or rapid video build at Genesis Models, um, I hope you've enjoyed this rapid video build.